Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing part two of the Lord of Blight tutorial. The first colour we're going to use today is a Grax Air Shade from Citadel. I'm going to be using this just to start weathering all of the lead belch and metallic. I want a miniature itself, it's got quite a bit of corrosion and stuff like that already modelled onto it. All those like little dimples and stuff like that in the metal. So you want to make sure these areas have got a Grax Air Shade round and that just gives it the initial base layer of sort of like dirt and grime and corrosion that you want to be working on. You can do this on all the areas of the lead belcher. So the Agrax Earthshade now finished, we're moving on to Citadel Seraphim Sepia. And this is going to be used in much the same way as the Agrax Earthshade. But you're going to be doing it mainly in the areas and the recesses. So you can see here, we're working it around the blade that's coming out of his shoulder, and into some of the little areas on the metallics. And then we'll be doing the same on the hammerhead too, using it around the areas of corrosion that we've already put the Agrax air shade on. So you're leaving some of the Agrax air shade visible, and you're adding the Seraphim Sepia to similar areas, just to get that more orangey, yellowy look that the rust will be bringing to it. Now we're going to be using Citadel Riser Rust just to add some orange to these rusty areas. It's a really, really good colour. This I really do like using it. It's one of the Citadel dry paints, so that as you are putting on your brush, rub a little bit off, and then you can just lightly dry brush that onto the areas that you want the rust. Depend on how much orange you want on there, you can add a little tiny bit, or you can add quite a lot. But it is really, really good paint. I do recommend this if you're doing rust colours. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Nihilac Oxide to add to the bronze areas. You can see there where all the rust has been added to. We're now just going to add the corrosion to the other metallics. So try and add this as the verdigris into like recesses and around the areas which aren't going to be maybe catching against enemy weapons or if he ever wipes it over with a filthy rag it's not going to get caught by them so you're just adding little bits of the verdigris to this to give it that turquoisey kind of colour that the verdigris has again this nihilac oxide is a really good paint it's a nice one to have for any time you want to weather something that's bronze or copper coloured I'm going to use citadel ushabti bone I'm going to add this to the horns we've already reapplied the rakath flesh we're now just going to add some Ushabti bone to this to give it that more bony kind of colour. We're also going to add this to the bone on the skull at the back there. There's also the middle severed head I mentioned earlier has got the bone showing around the nose and the top lip area. So you also want to be painting that up while you're doing this. Now I've just added a little bit of white to the Citadel Ushabti bone. We're now going to highlight all the bone. You can see I've added some of the colour to the middle severed head there as well. It's a lot darker than the rest of the bone, but because that head looks a lot fresher as well, I'll be adding a bit of gore to that, so you won't really be able to tell too much. like so. Now we're going to work on the armour, so we're going to use Citadel Elysian Green. We're going to reapply some of the colour back to the armour, leaving the shade in the recesses. Now on this I'm going to do a few little bits of weathering and rust on it, not too much though, but if you do want to see any videos on weathering it a bit more or adding more rust to it and chipping the paint and that kind of thing, just sing out in the comments and I can do a video for that as well. Good thing is that despite the big surfaces on the armour, there is still plenty of detail on there in terms of the, the rotten corrosion, so there's plenty to do on this part too. Now we're going to add some Citadel Nurgling Green to the Elysian Green. 
we're just going to do some highlights on the armor as always think about where the light's coming from if the light's coming from the top then you want the top parts to be a lot lighter so we're going to work on the light coming from directly above and highlight it like that Just carry on with this, and then on to the next colour. I'm going to add some more Nurgling Green to the previous mix. I'm going to add a final highlight to this. So you're probably going to be highlighting about 50% of the area that you just previously highlighted. Making sure you get it on the edges of any little details there, so where you've got the little dents of corrosion like the little circles you want to go on the underside of each of those on the top side of any features of the armor like the top of the calf guard there now i'm going to use citadel dryad bark and start reapplying color to the handle of his hammer I was going to add a little bit of colour to the head here as well. I want to make sure that you're leaving the shade in the recesses on here as well. The same for the haft of the hammer as well. There's a few little details on that, like little nicks. So just leave the shade in the recesses there. Now to highlight, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Mournfang Brown. and Mix that with the Dryad Bark and just apply a highlight onto the haft here very very quick layer because you're not doing this all the way around just on the top edges and the sides now we're going to add a little bit of little more fang brown to the previous mix and do one final highlight just on the edges and the details like so I'm going to use some citadel lead belcher and just do all of the little nails on the wood here at the back being very careful because you don't want to get any of this onto the wood and have to repaint that wood effect like so i'm going to use a little bit of citadel seraphim sepia and you're just going to paint over each of those give those a slightly orangey color or yellowy color of corrosion on them Now we're going to add some Citadel Zandri Dust. And this is just going to be to do the little rope here. Which we didn't do on the previous section where we did the ropes. So just to add this on. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Agrax Air Shade. I'm just going to shade that rope. If you've already done this bit then you can probably skip over it you don't need to do it twice now we're going to use a tiny little bit of citadel riser rust just to do these bolts you can probably tell from the order of filming that i noticed that that little rope on his loincloth there had been painted so i went back to do that now back to the zandri dust now that we've got this done we can add the details to the rope and start working on the other ropes too. So you're going to be trying to apply the Zandri just, just to the raised areas on the rope. Now there is quite a bit of it. So I'm using a Army Painter Wargamer character brush here. It's got a really good point and you can usually catch each of those little ridges without effort. Now we're going to work on one of the severed heads, so we're going to use Citadel Dryad Bark and mix some Deepkin Flesh with it, as we've already put the base colour back on. Now I'm just going to highlight this. The Deepkin Flesh does add a look as though the blood's drained out of the skin. I do tend to use it quite a bit when I'm painting up severed heads, as it just gives that pale 
bloodless look to the skin. Like so. Now we're going to add some more deepkin flesh to the previous mix and we're going to add another highlight to the skin there. Like so. Now we're going to add some final deepkin flesh to the previous mix and just highlight that skin once more. It's just going to be the extreme highlights here, so the very, very edges of the skin and the top areas where it'd be catching the light more. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone. We're going to start recolouring the skin on this severed head. And again, when you're reapplying the colour, you don't have to be 100% and get it a completely smooth finish because the skin's going to be a bit mottled with the blood's drained away from it. So if it's not 100% smooth, that doesn't matter too much. It doesn't concern me that. Just make sure that you get it on the majority of the skin so that we can highlight that with the next layer. Now we've added a little bit of Citadel Deepkin Flesh to the Cadian Flesh Tone. We're just going to start highlighting this skin as well. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit more deepkin flesh added to the previous mix. I'm just going to do one final highlight on this skin. You can see it does give it a nice blood drained look about it. Little to no effort, which is quite handy. Like so. Now we're going to start working on the final severed head. So we're going to go back to Citadel Kislev Flesh to reapply some of the colour. Now there's a load of detail on this one because it's got the cords sealing the eyes and the mouth shut. So it's a bit more of a paint to paint. Take your time with it, you should be fine. Now we're going to mix some Citadel Deepkin Flesh with the Kislev Flesh. We're going to start applying some highlights to that. Like so. Now I'm going to add a little bit more deepkin flesh to the previous mix. I'm going to give that skin another highlight. You can hear any bangs in the background there. There's someone doing work in one of the yards around the back of the house, so you can pick up. A few little clonks and thumps there. Like so. Now we're going to work on some of the boils on the skulls here and the heads. You're just going to add that dawn yellow back to any of the little 
boils and spots. Now we're going to use some Citadel Mornfang Brown. I'm going to start working on some of those straps. So because they are only quite narrow, you just want to be mainly applying it to the edges of the strap. But you can go across the whole strap if it flattens out, as some of them do. Like so. We're also going to add this to the cords which are sealing shut the mouth and the eyes of this severed head. Like so. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm going to use this around the eyes and on the cords because it gives a little bit of a red tint to it anyway. So if it gets into the recesses around the eyes it doesn't look too bad. Also it's dark enough that it will shade those cords. Now I'm going to mix some Rakar Flesh with the Mornfang Brown. And we're going to do the same kind of scuffing and wear and tear on the straps as we do with the likes of Space Marine pouches and that kind of thing. It's Vallejo Beige Brown next. I'm going to use that to reapply colour to the pouch. So as usual, think about the light. You're not going to go right the way around the underside of the pouch. You're going to leave that shaded. And just do the top edges of all these ridges and that kind of thing just to reapply the colour. I'm going to mix a little bit of Rakarth Flesh with the Beige Brown now. I'm just going to highlight these top parts. Like so. I've added a little bit more Rakarth Flesh in. We're just going to do one final highlight on the pouch. You're catching that little ridge where the pouch is ripped. And then the top edges of all those ridges there too. Now we're working on his tail. We're going to start with Citadel Pink Horror. We're going to reapply the colour, making sure that you leave the shade in the recesses. And for the second layer, we're going to use Citadel Emperor's Children. You're making sure you catch the top edges of all the ridges there. So as the tail goes down, where the light catches those ridges is going to be in a slightly different place. Also going to do the tongue in the middle severed head too. Now we're going to use just plain Vallejo White. I'm going to use this to paint up the eyeball on that left hand severed head. Like so. Now we're going to use a tiny spot of Vallejo Black just to add a pupil to that eye. Have it looking anywhere you want. I think the straight ahead dead stare is quite freaky when you see it on models so I've gone for that. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Cassandora yellow just to yellow that eye a bit. Now if you put too much on you can just use the tip of the brush to take that off again. Now we're going to use Vallejo red wash. I'm going to go around all of the boils and spots on the severed heads. Like so. Now we're going to start using Citadel on the fist on red again. I'm just going to reapply some of the red back to the open wounds. So all these little bits here, if you've got any details on it, you want to leave the shade in the recesses and just apply it to the raised areas in the wounds. But bringing the colour back out on them really does make them look pretty gross.
like so. Now we're going to use some Vallejo red wash. I'm just going to put this around the eyes and the mouth of this head here. A little shout out from Zig there. She comes in to get some strokes. And that is the miniature so far. I've got it before we start adding some of the more gory details to him. So we're going to start with Citadel Carabaird Crimson. I'm just going to start painting splats up the back of the severed heads. I'm also going to use this to do runs of blood from each of the open wounds. Now the bases that I do here, you can see it's still and Battlemire at the back of the base and it's the green textured paint, uh, Lustrian Undergrowth at the front because I like to have the bases so it looks like as they're walking along it's making all the earth beneath them all swampy and revolting. So if you want to see a video on that let me know and I can do a quick video on how to do the bases. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Mournfang Brown. I'm going to do some corrosion and rust streaks on his armour. So first off you want to be painting on the line of the rust streak using the Mornfang Brown or any little spots that you want to do. So you don't want to go too overboard on it unless you want it really really corroded. I wanted to try and keep a bit of the colour and just make them a little bit less rusty than maybe the Plague Bearer Swords or stuff like that. So now that we've added some of those details to it we're going to add some orange to the rusty effects, so it's going to be Citadel Squig Orange for this. And all you're going to be doing is adding a few little thin runs from all the little dimples and all the little scratches that you've put across the armour. I'm using a Citadel Medium Layer Brush here because the point's really good, but if you want to do thin lines and you don't want to use a medium layer brush, then the Army Painter War Game, a character brush, is what I'd usually use for it. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Carabaird Crimson. I'm going to start adding the runs of blood from all the wounds. Now when you're adding this you can add quite thin runs from all of the wounds. You want to think about where the blood would be running. So if there's any creases and things like that then it'd probably be running through the creases as well. I'm not doing too much on this one. Quite a bit but not too much. I use the Carabaird Crimson as kind of like the base blood. And then I'll be adding some blood for the Blood God to give it that shininess. So here we go with Blood for the Blood God. When you're applying this, you want to think about where it's going to have run to, where it's going to be fresh, and where it's going to look glistening and quite horrible. Depending on how far you want to go, you can go to town with this. When you think about the size of the wounds that are opening the stomach, you're going to get a lot of blood coming out of them. I'm not doing too much, but just enough to make it look revolting. Once you've finished adding that, that is the model finished. So here is the finished Lord of Blight. It's a great model. Tons and tons of detail. Really good to paint as well. There's so many different things you can do with it if you wanted to. But yeah, awesome model. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much.